Hey guys, it's Linux next year. In today's video, we are going to be looking up how to set up, if you haven't noticed, uh, live wallpapers on Linux with Wallpaper Engine. As I know, there's a lot of people who may be wanting to switch over from Windows to Linux, and they use the Wallpaper Engine uh, application to apply live wallpapers. Well, you actually can do it on Linux as there is a project, there's two projects that you can try out if you're on KDE Plasma to get your Wallpaper Engine wallpapers to work on the KDE Plasma desktop. Now, there is one project that has been worked on for quite a while, which isn't this actual project. It's another project that got worked on for many years to try and get the wallpaper engine to work properly. But there is now a project that I did find from the KDE plugin store that directs to a new GitHub project that is basically, I'm pretty sure it's a fork of the other project. And uh, it makes this a little bit easier when it comes to installing it. So you Usually the other project, you had to compile it manually and that could be quite tedious if you're a new user. Well, this developer has packaged these actually and seems to be packaged them rather quickly, I would say. The last release was two weeks ago, which isn't bad at all. All I would say. So if you are on Arch like I am, you can grab the uh, .pkg.tar.zst package and then you can either do um, this command here and this command here to install it. So like what we do here is we copy this command. We do have to open up a terminal uh, and we want to um, take away this bracket here because with this bracket it just fails um, to actually grab the package. I don't know why um, this bracket is even here. This should be edited so it's shown properly uh, but if we do it and we type in our password it grabs the package for us. I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to do that again. And then we want to copy this command here, which is the sudo pacman uh, space dash capital U, uh, which means you're installing a package manually, basically with, with something like a PKG. And you want to put in the path. And then there is a dash dash overwrite with a um, star. And this, what this does basically is it checks for any files that conflict with the file that you're trying to install and it's going to overwrite it properly for you. So if we do copy this, for example, we do paste. What I like to do is cut this out because uh, that is the wrong number file also as it hasn't been uh, updated on the actual GitHub. So you want to cut that out fully. And then you want to find the package in here, which we can see ours is in our home. It may be in downloads or wherever you download it. And you just want to drag and drop it into the terminal so that it looks like this. Then we click enter. And as we can see, uh, for me, it already installed the other packages that were needed for this uh, wallpaper engine plugin to work properly. So it's just going to install the regular uh, wallpaper engine package. And if you are on SteamOS, you can also go through this documentation of how to set it up. Basically, you need to turn off the read-only mode in SteamOS and then do some Pac-Man keys to populate it with the right keys. And then you want to do the same uh, wget to get the latest package and then do the same command as we did before to install it. And then we need to change, looks like we need to change some permissions with KDE so it works properly. Uh, and then you need to re-enable the read only so that I'm guessing if an update comes through, it won't be removed. And then if you are on a Debian slash Ubuntu, you can basically do the same thing as the Arch users did, but instead there is a .debian package, which you don't have to necessarily do that through the terminal. You can just do the wget, or you can go to the release uh, tab here, which there should be a version for Ubuntu. Oh, here it is. There's a version for Debian here. So you can usually just grab this .debian file and then launch it in a GUI software and then click install and it will install everything for you. And that is basically it when it comes to this plugin. After you get it installed, you can go either to the right click on desktop and wallpaper. You can then click on wallpaper engine for KDE or you can go into the settings in KDE Plasma, click on wallpaper and then you can start changing the wallpapers that you have. Now, of course, you need Wallpaper Engine installed to grab these wallpapers. So when it comes to setting this up, when you first set it up, it will not know where these wallpapers are. So you will have to tell it where it is. So for me, it's on my um, games drive or SSD. So we click on library, we then click on drives, games, steam library, 
or just click on Steam Library folder, click OK, and then it should find the wallpapers for you. And when, uh, like where these wallpapers actually are, if we go to the directory, go Steam Library, Steam Apps, it is in Workshop, Content, and then the app ID, which is 431960. As you can see, here is all of the wallpaper engine wallpapers for you. Now, like I said before, sadly, this uh, plugin is only available on KDE Plasma. There is no plugin available for GNOME or any type of like extension that you could install on GNOME to get this functionality. And from my knowledge, it seems that GNOME doesn't support the proper things to get this type of uh, wallpaper engine to work properly uh, so if you're on KDE Plasma you're able to do it if you're on GNOME or really any other desktop environment you are not able to do this sadly but there is other applications on, on GNOME I know there is a uh, Hidemari which I did try in the past when it first released and this is a pretty all right live wallpaper application if you want to apply wallpapers that are from either youtube so you can apply a url or you can do a local video so you've got a video file you can play that as a live wallpaper or even a web page so this is a good one for gnome uh, but sadly there's no plugin when it comes to the wallpaper engine side of things and when it comes to the issues that you can have with wallpaper engine there is one big issue that can occur and it's depending on the wallpaper that you use so i will show you guys the issues that do happen is if i do click this wallpaper right here and click apply it's going to crash my plasma shell so i'm going to show a video on my phone of what that looks like and how to fix that problem as uh, it is actually a pretty big problem if you are using this plugin as it can completely um, stop you from being able to use your Plasma desktop. So as you can see, we are running a live wallpaper at the moment, and I'm just gonna show you a demonstration of the Plasma shell crashing. When you have a specific uh, wallpaper selected and how to fix it. So here is one wallpaper here that decides to crash the Plasma shell desktop. I'm going to hit apply. As you can see, it fails to load, right? Then Plasma Shell crashes. It spawns a bunch of Plasma Shell crash handlers, uh, which please do not report this as I already have reported it and they've said to go contact the developers, which I probably am going to do that at some point if development starts up again as developers haven't really worked on this project in a while. But to fix the problem, you need to launch a terminal by doing Control Alt T. And then we want to uninstall the package, which uh, for me, I'm going to do a paru and then space dash capital R and then the name of the package, which is wallpaper engine space KDE6. Wait, there was an underscore? Okay, sorry, there was an underscore on that. And these need to be capitals properly so that it can actually pick up the package. Do Y and then you reboot your PC. When you log in, it may take a little bit longer for it to actually load up the desktop environment as KDE basically kind of like resets itself with the wallpapers. And then you can either reinstall it and make sure that you don't click on the wallpapers that make Plasma Shell crash. But most wallpapers on here do work. So example, this one. Oh, would look at that. It does work. We got this one. Wow, it works and it does play music. So we can change a couple things here. We can unmute the audio if we want to. And it does indeed work. I'm going to mute this actually because it might be copyrighted music, I would say. Uh, but when it comes to the other things that it does, does support, if we go to settings here, we can change the display options. We can change the pause. So, for example, if you're in a focused window, for example, oh, look at that. The wallpaper has stopped moving. If we want to do a maximized window or a full screen window or any window, uh, you can change it to your liking. And then when it comes to, you can change like the resume time, randomized time if you want to. You can change the playback speeds if you want to make it really, really, really like fast or something of, of this live wallpaper. You can indeed do that. As you can see, it has been changed. 
and you can change the video backend. So by default, it's going to be on Qt Multimedia, uh, which does work well, I would say, but MPV seems to be a lot more compatible when it comes to things like GPU decoding. So if, if you have an AMD card, I don't know if this works on Nvidia, I don't think it does, but on AMD, uh, like what I have, you can get decoding to work. If we go to our GPU here, we can see that it's decoding the live wallpaper as it is being played on uh, my other monitors currently. So when it comes to the CPU usage, it's like nearly none because it's being decoded on my GPU directly. And you can show the stats of MPV. So you can check out uh, the video file format, the resolution, color it's using, the audio rate it's using also, and then what backend it's using, which is Pipewire. And the last one is, of course, you can change the FPS. So if you wanted to be at like 60 FPS, if you want to, uh, as you can see now, it is extremely smooth. And just to show off, we'll change some more wallpapers. So you can see all of these. Uh, here's one, which is some uh, Halo one. Uh, we can change it to this one, which does work well. Uh, Pixel Rain. And of course, some of these wallpapers aren't like cropped properly. So you can easily change this in the display settings to like either scale and crop, which does seem to fix that wallpaper. Got some other ones here, some very simple ones or like something like Zelda, like I love this wallpaper. It's uh, the person who animated this did an amazing job, I would say. The main drawback with it is uh, like currently, my desktop has crashed because I selected a wallpaper that I did not test. And as you can see, Plasma Shell is crashing. Uh, and the other issue, is that uh, the live wallpapers, not every single one works properly like with widgets. So if a wallpaper has a bunch of widgets on it that you can interact usually on Windows, those will not work. But you can uh, easily just use the widgets that are on KDE Plasma. So it's not that big of a problem, I would say. Uh, you can usually just replicate uh, those wallpapers or whatever widgets they're using. Either it be a time or it be some system monitor type thing. You can easily just replicate it. Now, the last one is when is Wallpaper Engine coming to Linux or even macOS also? Because it's not available in macOS. And the answer is, uh, well, probably never if I... I had to say, I guess, in it. Uh, but when it says here what the actual developers say, Wallpaper Engine is currently available for Windows and Android, and there are no immediate plans to support other platforms at this time. We definitely understand that users may want us to support other operating systems that they personally prefer, but it's really not a simple task to make Wallpaper Engine available on every possible platform. The core of Wallpaper Engine is a completely custom written software solution, and the amount of work involved to fully port it to other platforms is enormous. Some users might wonder how some games and applications have been seemingly easily ported to Mac and Linux by the developers. The answer to that is that these titles are based on widely used video game engines like Unity or Unreal, which do not require the individual developers to do anything significant to add support for more platforms. However, none of this applies when it comes to a custom application like Wallpaper Engine. Since it's an application which interacts closely with the operating system, it really needs to be tailored to each specific operating system to make it work properly. In the case of Linux, it goes even further and must be made to work with every popular display manager, which differ significantly between distributions. They do make a point here. Uh, when it comes to the compositor side, not every compositor supports the same protocols. So this is where Wallpaper Engine would need to make a decision to support one compositor that supports the wide range of protocols and uh, things like Qt, for example, I know Qt offers like the Qt Multimedia or NPV to get these live wallpapers to work properly. And it would introduce other things like if it was brought over to GNOME, there probably would be some type of limitation or with other desktop environments also, maybe like Cinnamon also on Under Wayland might have some limitation because it's experimental. There'd be plenty of issues that may occur, but as we can see here, with the development of uh, this plugin for KDE Plasma, uh, it does indeed work quite well beside some of the wallpapers causing a crash on Plasma Shell. So it's definitely possible, especially when this plugin is trying to basically translate in a way 
to get these war live wallpapers to work properly because they're not just regular live wallpapers they're actually just regular images with like some JSON code applied to them so they have some animations that are applied to them so then it can be an animated wallpaper so this is a big feat in its own where a you know bunch of developers are able to make a plugin like this actually work and they continue to say that you know linux is low in market share uh, and the situation is simple that it's not economically available viable for us to support linux or mac os at this time so even mac os which has a similar market share to linux i'm pretty sure maybe a bit higher or a bit lower they don't think it's uh you know viable to bring that support over either so i do believe at some point wallpaper engine will support linux or mac os whoever gets the bigger market share on the steam hardware survey for right now if you do want live wallpapers on kde plasma you do have to use this plugin and of course if you have any issues please comment down below i would really love to know because there is a couple things that you may encounter when installing this plugin where it's like maybe missing a certain dependency uh, for these these are pre-compiled so you shouldn't be missing anything but if you are doing like manual compiling or something like that uh, you may miss a couple of things so if you guys did enjoy this video definitely give it a like and you can definitely subscribe to the channel i'll show a text across the screen of my uh, members thank you for giving me money every single month i really do appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video peace